Welcome to Fishing Tutorials. In this video, we're gonna look at how to use PVA for your carp fishing. PVA stands for polyvinyl alcohol. It's a water-soluble substance that can be used to carry small parcels of bait into your swim whilst attached to your rig. You can attach a PVA bag or stringer to your rig and upon impact with the water, it dissolves away, just leaving your bait and hook bait. There are a number of different ways to use PVA. The three ways we've used it most are mesh bags, solid bags, and strings. In our opinion, fishing with PVA can really up your catch rate. It's not something that I'd suggest you use all the time. For example, if you're on a very big river or massive lake and you've been pre-baiting heavily in a wide area and you're fishing three rods over the top of that pre-baited area, little PVA bags of pellet over the top of that probably aren't gonna make very much difference. However, scale things down and you're on an average fishery, you're turning up, you wanna get a quick bite or you need to fish accurately with a little patch of bait around your hook bait, definitely PVA bag fishing is the way to go and there's a number of different ways that you can do it. First up, there's funnel web or mesh PVA. Now when you buy this, it comes supplied on a tube. Inside is a compressor that you use to condense the bait and push it down into the bag. When you run out of the mesh, you can buy refills to fit the size of the tube that you were using, so you don't have to buy a whole new tube each time you run out. You can use almost any bait you like in a PVA bag, as long as it's not got water in it. Be careful, as there are some PVA-friendly liquids which are based around oils, but anything water-based will melt your PVA. So this is how to make a funnel web PVA bag. Pour in your chosen amount of bait into the tube. Use the compressor tool with your thumb placed over the end of the tube and compress the bait down. Push the bait out the end of the tube and tie an overhand knot to hold the bag in place. Pull off some more PVA mesh, tie another overhand knot right next to the first one you tied, then take some scissors and cut in between the two knots. Because you made that second knot, you're now ready to tie another bag. Once you get the hang of this, you can create a load of PVA bags in quite a short space of time. It does take a little bit of a knack, but once you're used to it, you can make loads of bags quite quickly. Mesh bags can simply be hooked onto your rig. We would advise hooking through the edge of the bag, twisting, and then hooking it on again. This ensures that it is firmly attached and won't fall away from the hook in deeper water. If you only lightly hook on the bag, then you can have problems, especially in deeper water, where the bag begins to melt and breaks away from your rig. By hooking the bag on, twisting it, and then re-hooking it, it ensures that it's still attached to your hook when it reaches the bottom. The other way to attach a funnel web bag to your rig is to thread it down your hook link. This is particularly useful when using smaller PVA bags with the long chuck variety. These are thinner and allow you to cast much further. It also gives the benefit of hiding your hook point, meaning it can't get caught up on weed or debris on the cast. It also reduces tangles. A point to remember when threading a PVA bag down your hook link and having your hook tuck inside the bag is to make sure you use a fine mix of bait. This ensures that your point doesn't get stuck inside a boilie, for example, and ruin your chances of a bite. So that's an introduction into funnel web PVA bags. Next up, we've got solid bags. A bit like the method feeder, solid bags enable a tight patch of bait with your lead and rig tucked inside. Solid bags come in a range of sizes, the smaller ones lending themselves to long distance casting, and the larger ones better for getting loads of bait out and perhaps flattening a patch of weed and ensuring good presentation of your rig. Sometimes we see people hooking a solid bag onto a traditional rig and casting it out. This might work on some occasions, but we'll regularly deposit the bait all over the place when the hook melts free of the bag and it floats up to the surface. To ensure this doesn't happen, it's much better to have your rig and lead tucked inside the bag neatly. Solid bags can be fished over silt or light weed and can work a bit like a parachute, slowing the rig down as it sinks and ensuring that the rig is not tangled or buried in the debris on the bottom. In our eyes, a mix of small pellet sizes are the perfect filling for a solid bag as they fill all of the air gaps and ensure that the bag will be tight and dense. 
You can just use one size of pellet or even boilies, but smaller baits tend to be better as they pack down more neatly inside your bag. When using solid bags, we like to use an inline lead in conjunction with a short, supple pop-up rig. A rig of approximately three to four inches seems to work quite well for us, and a supple braid tucks into the bag neatly. So now let's look at how it works. Take your solid bag and using two fingers, open it up. We are using a small size bag for this demonstration. Scoop in a small amount of pellet mix, just enough to cover the bottom of the bag. Then, lower in your lead, but keeping the rig outside of the bag, then begin to cover it with pellets. Aim to just about cover your lead with the pellet. Give the bag a little shake or a tap as you go to settle the bait down. Once the lead is just about covered, it's time to place in the hook bait. We like to have the rig pushed to one side of the bag to keep it away from tangling around the lead. Once the hook bait is tucked in the side, continue to fill the bag with pellets. Don't fill the bag right to the top though, as you'll now need to lick the outside of the bag and twist it up to hold it together. Your saliva will make the PVA melt slightly and then it will set in place whilst you hold the bag in position for a few seconds. This lick and twist method is fine when casting short to medium distances, but if you are planning to cast the bag really, really far, tie a couple of overhand knots with PVA tape to tie up the bag and then trim the excess. This will just give it a little bit more strength when really casting long distances. Again, if casting far and accurately is important, then tap the corners of the bag to create a gap in the bait before licking those corners and folding them in. This continues to make the bag even more compact and also aerodynamic. To finish off the bag, we use a baiting needle to puncture a few holes into the PVA. Upon impact with the water, this will release any trapped air. You now have the perfect solid PVA bag ready to cast out. Once in the water, the PVA dissolves away, leaving your hook bait and a pile of loose feed neatly around it. Lastly, you've got PVA tape. PVA tape is perfect for creating a stringer. Now, stringer fishing it was something that was a lot more popular in the past. These days, not a lot of people do it, but it is an effective way to just have a handful of boilies around your rig. To create a PVA stringer, take a gate latch baiting needle and thread on some boilies. The number of baits that you use is entirely up to you. But if you're casting far, use less boilies, and if it's a little cast, you can get away with a few more. Cut a length of PVA tape. Fold the tape in half. Hook the folded end over the needle. Close the gate latch and thread the boilies onto the tape. Pass the loop of the tape over your hook and hair. Then slide the boilies down to the rig and trim the tag end. If you're casting really far, you can then tie a knot at the bottom of the tape to stop the boilies from sliding off. But to be honest, we've never had a problem with this happening. We hope you've enjoyed watching this quick introduction to PVA. I hope that you've picked up some useful information from it and good luck with your fishing on your next session.